Good morning. I want to thank you again for uh, being with us this morning for uh, worship here at Mississippi United Methodist Church. We appreciate you all being here this morning. Let us begin our time with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love. We thank you, Lord God, that you bring us together, Lord, on this beautiful day. We pray, Father God, as we come together now, that you would bind us with your love, your grace, your mercy, and your Holy Spirit. Make us one people of one mind and one accord, Lord God, that we are able to worship you with everything we are and everything we have this morning. Father, I pray for your hand upon us, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that we may be able to see you, feel you, hear you, know you this morning, Lord. That we, uh, when we worship you, Lord God, that we are giving everything of ourselves to you, Lord God. Open ourselves as, as uh, vessels open to you and to your spirit. Be with us this morning, Lord God, and be with us every day. Lord, as we prepare ourselves for the week to come, we pray, Lord God, that you give us excitement, that you uh, help us to focus, Lord God, and be able to help others find their place in your hand. We thank you again for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Uh, again, I welcome you. Thank you for being here this morning with us to be able to worship God. We want to um, uh, give everybody a, a wonderful morning, but also a uh, happy Mother's Day to all those uh, ladies out there who are either biological mothers or mothers by happenstance. Uh, in my life, I've been able to uh, know wonderful ladies that have kind of stepped into that um, into that framework for me and have, have helped me in, in my life. And uh, praise every one of those and thank you all for uh, for your love and your grace. We also know that uh, please keep in prayer for those that this holiday may not be as um, as wonderful as, as it is for others. Uh, some um, have lost their mothers or or maybe uh, just uh, lament the relationship you could have had with their mother. So please be in prayer for all of them. But we thank you all for being here this morning. A um, <clears throat> couple of announcements. Um, I want to. We are um, on the. Here in a couple of weeks, the, the church is going to get uh, back together, and we're going to start talking about how we're going to uh, transition to getting back together uh, physically here at the church. Um, and uh, there, so there will be a, um, I will send out an email and or a, a shout out on, on a, the different ways of social media that we can get to you uh, to let you know what uh, what we come up with. Um, the the United Methodist Church is, is aiming for the middle of July to uh, begin this transition. So, um, so we will keep you informed and um, and let you know. I hope everybody's keeping safe and uh, uh, being with their families. And, and I know uh, we are beginning to uh, kind of begin this transition and, and try to find ways to get back into the swing of things. So I pray that you are being careful um, and that you uh, are have the ability to do the things that you need to be done. So. Uh, we pray for you all. All right, if you would, uh, we're going to do our affirmation of faith. If you have a hymnal with you, uh, it's on page 80, 881. Our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We uh, come to our time of, of sharing uh, what God is doing in our lives and uh, sharing with each other and praising God and sharing with each other. Um, I hope you have a praise. Uh, I would love to hear them if you want to uh, Send them to me through text or email or even call me. Um, let me know that everything's going okay and uh, let me know your praises. 
Um, I see a lot of them on on uh, on social media with kids playing around and having a good time. So uh, um, praise God for all the many blessings He gives us. One of the praises that we got this week is Cameron Dixon has finally graduated college um, with a finance degree from GSU. So we, uh, you know, and there's a lot of them. If you see them, uh, uh, there's a lot of young people who have been been graduating this year. Of course, my heart goes out to them that some of them have not been, had the ability to walk on stage, but still yet they have their diplomas and they have finished and starting a new uh, a new journey in their lives. So be in prayer for all those graduating uh, seniors from college that are going off into the world and uh, trying new things. So we pray for them and and uh, praise them on their achievements. All right, we uh, also uh, now to our prayer concerns, we want to let you know that uh, Ms. Dottie Hamilton had passed this last week, so we uh, pray for her family, so we put them on our prayer list of, of the loss of Ms. Dottie Hamilton. Again, also, if you want to, uh, if there are prayer concerns or needs, please let us know through uh, email again, uh, or, you know, social media, whatever. Uh, please let us know. We will put them on our list and, and uh, let everybody know so we can be in prayer for those situations and people. Okay, let us uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you, Lord God, that you uh, have your hand upon us. Lord, that through your Son, Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, we have a way to come to you, Lord, with our thanksgiving, with our gratitude, Lord God, with our praise, with our worship. We thank you, Lord God, of many blessings that we see in our lives, Father. Even while going through hard times, Lord God, you are with us. You lead us, you guide us, you love us. Father, we thank you uh, for those things that you do for us, Lord God, for the love that changes everything. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, but we know that for every uh, blessing that we receive, there is a need. For those that we have just added on your list, those that are continue to be on our hearts and our minds, and on these lists, Lord God, we pray for your hand of healing, hand of healing, of physical healing, Lord God, mental healing, emotional. Father, we pray that you would lead them through this journey, Father, when it looks to be the darkest, Father, that you would have a light for them, that they can follow, Lord God, to the other side. We pray for resources. We pray for strength. We pray for the families, Lord God, involved. Lord, we pray for our community and our world, Lord, that... Uh, it seems bleak and, and harsh, Lord God, but we know that you are a God of hope, a God of mercy, and a God of love. So we pray, Lord God, that you would continue to lead us and guide us. Father, help those that are on this list and on our hearts and our minds that we continue to move forward, Father, in your grace and your mercy. We pray, Lord God, that it was uh, for us to, uh, uh, to go forth and help others, Lord. Give us the names, give us the situations, give us the strength that we may do so, Lord, and lead them to you, Father God. We thank you again for all that you do. We pray now like your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. If you have your Bibles, please uh, follow me to 1 Peter, chapter 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2, starting at verse 2. First Peter chapter 2, starting at verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, and you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepting to God through Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and who believes on him will be no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believes, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. Yes, I Amen. This um uh, this week of uh, you know, the uh, word started rolling in my head um in uh, the word gift um and what does that mean and and in in any way as I began to look at it um I found this verse um that I love in uh, First Peter and it it begins to tell about um about being a living stone. Um, but first, I, I want to touch on something that, that really struck me um, as something that comes straight from God. 
is the, the two, two words, chosen and precious. You know, those are, those are words that, uh, I don't know, for me, um, made me feel and, and, and think of, of being accepted by God. First of all, because you're chosen. And um, I looked at the, this word in, uh, in the, what it says in, in the dictionary, is it, it says set apart and worthy. So we were chosen. You know, and sometimes you, you look at yourself, and I'm depending on on, you, on how you see yourself and what your view of yourself is. You know, sometimes we don't we don't see ourselves as worthy. We don't see ourselves as as somebody who you know who would be good at anything, let alone set apart for a specific purpose and put on a pedestal and and you know put on high. Um, the one thing that kind of struck me is that, I don't know you guys might not have felt this, but but it, on the playground when I was a kid, you know, everybody was trying to play certain sports, you know, unless it, unless it was soccer, because I was actually pretty good at soccer. But like if we were playing basketball or baseball or everything like that, I was always the last one chosen because I wasn't very good at those sports. So they would see and they would remember my past um, experiences playing the game and they, would, they wouldn't want me on their team because they wanted the horse to win. Right? They wanted they wanted somebody who was gonna help them move forward and reach that goal and, and you know and be uh whatever, you know, for the for that time of period. And that set me to thinking about God, you know, about Jesus, about what he's how he sees things and, and how he operates. And you know, of course we go back to, to the experience with, with King David, you know, when he first saw him, he told Samuel, I don't I don't see the outside. The outside has nothing to do with anything I do. I see the inside. I see. I see what it means to be open to me. You know. I. I see. I see the potential in somebody. See, that's the, the greatest thing about God. God looks at us and He sees the potential. The potential. Now, yes, it is up to us to live up to that potential. To be more open. To to connect to God. To pray. To um. To go where He calls us to go. To be where He calls us to be. To to learn more about him, to to connect more him in, in in the presence and and relational and relationship, that's up to us. But he sees the potential. You know, he looked at at all the world, at all the world, you know, and pointed to you and said, "You're mine. I chose you. You're part of my family. You're part of my plan. You're part of you're part of the things that I do. You're part of my world." You know, I love you and you, you're going to be the best you can be. I am going to help you to reach the highest potential that you can ever reach. That you wouldn't even think about reaching I, because I chose you. Because you're special. You're set apart. I know what you can do with my help and my grace and my mercy. I know what you can do. That's what God tells us every day. He chose you. He set you apart. He's building you. He's, he's helping you become the best you can be. And that is, is awesome. And to the fact that this world tends not to choose us, tends to reject us, tends to put us in, and you know, try to put us in a box or in a peg or, you know, even sometimes even put us away because we don't fit whatever the world wants us to fit. But God is not like that. He says, Man, please, I will build a hole. I will build a box for you. I will put you on the top of that box so you won't be fit in it, but on top of it so everybody will see you. That's what God does. Because he chose you. He wants you in his family. He wants you on his team because he knows your potential. He sees how high and how great you can be. Beyond what we can see in ourselves, that's the awesomeness of God. Because it was up to us and we, uh, what we see, we would never get to where we need to be or where we can or where we can be with God's grace and help. See, but that's not only where he stops. Yes, he chose you. Yes, he chose you. But he also believes that you're precious. That you're worth something. And again, the, the, you know, I love words. And precious is uh, the definition is a high price 
or great value. Dear and beloved, you're worth a high price. And that price was paid by Jesus. He gave up his life. He gave up his kingdom. He gave up everything so that you may have it all. So God paid the price that you're worth. That's eternity, life in Jesus Christ. You're beloved, you're um, loved, you're, you're dear, and you're a great value. See, because not only are you chosen, because you are, but you're precious. You know, that word precious, um, one, of the, one of the things, because you, know, you guys know that I, I love movies. And, uh, and one of the movies is that this little elf goblin thing, dude, has a ring that everybody wants, right? Ring of power whatever. And he sits there and he strokes it, you know, precious. You know, if you ever know that reference, but that's how much God, you're precious to God. And he does. He takes care of you. He shines you up. He makes you, he makes you more better than you already are. So not only are you chosen, but you're precious. Precious. Think about that word precious. What is precious to you? You know, my family is precious to me. My grandkids, my kids, my wife, you know, precious. My ministry is precious. You know, some people, you know, look at, at, at material things, you know, like diamonds and gold. Those are considered precious. They even call them precious metals, right? We're precious. You're precious to God. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to shine. He wants you to be more than, than what you think you are, right? And more than other people think you are. He wants you to be the best of the best of the best. So he chose you because you're precious to him and precious to the world. See, because the other part of this of this. Uh, um, of this verse is, is that not only are we chosen and precious, but God has set us apart. And this is where it gets a little like this. I'm, you know, I understand the word living water, right? Because you, you look at it and it goes, you're living water. So you flow and, and you live and you, and, and you do things, right? But what is a, a living stone? You know, I was looking at this as a living stone. Okay, what what is the living stone? Do you? Do you want your rocks to jump up and move around and be alive? What's a living stone? So, I mean, I'm looking at this. I'm going, okay, what's a living stone? And, and a little bit of that is that is that God wants us to be strong, right? Firm in foundation, right? He wants us to things to be built on us, right? Because, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, back in his day, when he was talking about living, you know, be, being a stone, um, you know, and having things built on you, um, the references to that is that they did everything out of stones. You know, we don't we didn't have concrete, you know, like we do now. They didn't have you know bricks. Um, it was it was he got a, a big stone and he chiseled it, chiseled it so it to be a foundation. That's what he meant. You know, so we have to understand that that you know that reference to to being a, a stone, right, where, where things are built on. But he calls us to be a living stone, not. Not meaning that, you know, the rock's going to jump up and move around. But what meaning is that, that yes, we, we need to, to be strong and firm in foundation. That we, that we need things to be built on us. But we need to be a living one. That if we see, uh, you know, the foundation over there, you know, kind of crumbling a little bit. That we need to be enough that we can move over there and firm up that foundation. Not stay rooted, right? Because you have to be careful with being rooted. You know, I mean, yes, we need to be a foundation, but to be rooted is to stay right there and, and just and just be. See, God doesn't call us call us to be that. He wants us to be living. He wants us to be open to to change and to move and to be able to receive the gifts that he has for us that we can go help others uh, be the best they can. So we need to be able to, um, you know, see things and, and move ourselves as, as, you know, as rocks to be living. To see where it is that we can help and from the foundation. 
You know, another, another thing that, uh, that it says here about Jesus and also a little bit about us is that um, not only are we live, is he the stone of foundation, but he's also a stumbling block for those who don't believe. You know, I, I uh, when I got uh, into certain situations, when I'm called to a certain place where I need to be, you know, the chaplain or the, or the pastor or something like that, um, I don't go in there kind of just blazing. You know, I don't come in and go, God, I'm, you know, I'm the pastor, I'm here to save everybody. Um, <clears throat> when I went to the sheriff's office, my plan was to be like a chair, you know, like a piece of furniture. I was there so much, you know, I, I, I just kind of fit into the, into the, you know, to the things that are working around me that, you know, I, I didn't say a whole lot or, you know, proclaim myself a whole lot. I just kind of sit there. So eventually I just became part of the, part of the furniture, part of, part of the place. That they would just trip over me, you know, and then eventually, you know, eventually they would recognize I was there and I'd just become one, one of the, one of the, the guys, one of the, one of the, you know, backdrops. And something about that kind of brought me back to this living uh, stone thing is that sometimes we need to be so present in a person's life and sometimes in our own life. Just like Jesus was present in the world and present in people's lives that, that we begin to, to tip over him because he's firm in foundation right? And salvation, grace, and love, and mercy, and, and we stand for that. And eventually, those that don't see that it that way, or don't believe in Jesus Christ, will eventually trip over us. Not in, not in a, in a you know, oh, I'm trip down and stay down, but trip will figure out, you know, what's going on? So we help them to begin to think and see and be a part of what God has for them also in life. You know, be a living stone, some, where God can build his kingdom on you here on earth, build his kingdom on you, but also living in a sense where we can um, see where the issues are and, and move forward, not stay rooted, but be able to move forward and help others and help other situations and help other places so that they can, they also too can see that firm foundation in Jesus Christ in us. We are chosen. We are precious to God. But also, he chose us to be something. You know, to be somebody. To do things. Not our things, not the world's things, but God's things. This world needs his people to stand up on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ and proclaim his name. And not in a, in a just a generalized uh, way, which is not, there's nothing wrong with that. But to be able to tell your story with Jesus, because that's that's what's worthy. That's what's worth it. Is when people begin to tell their story to other people about Jesus, not the grand scheme of things, not the not the, the stories. You know, even though that they're, they're they are worthy and they are precious about Moses and David, because those lead back to us. But what is he doing in your life? How are you being able to move forward in, in the troubles of this world with God? See, that's what people need to hear. That's what people need to see. That's what we need to proclaim. Because we are, we, me, you, are those living stones. And you know, and, and I don't know if you remember when Jesus walked into to Jerusalem, right? Uh, and the people tried to keep his people from being quiet. He said, don't worry about that because... If I needed to be praised, these rocks would praise me. Let's be praising rocks. God is building his kingdom in, on, on us. So we need to proclaim his name. We need to, to praise. We need to shout. We need to, to let people see that, yes, we are firmly planted on the foundation. And yes, God is building his kingdom on us. But we're living we're about living in this world. We're about living with you. We're about being able to proclaim God and how God lives within us. Living is the key, that word that we need to, to be able to use and move forward. We are living. We're not dead. We're not frozen. We're chosen and we're precious. And we're living stones that we can go out and spread God's word to all these people who may be rooted, who may be in a rut, who may be down in the pit, 
But together as his people, we can build a firm foundation, a way out of all those things. A better way, a way to Jesus, a way to God, because you're chosen, you're precious, and you're a living stone. Let God live in you so you may live in this world and God may live in this world with you. Amen. I want to thank you for being here this morning. I appreciate you all. If you need anything from me, please call me, text me, email me, whatever. Let me know. Uh, we love you. We thank you for being here this morning again. And uh, receive the benediction. Go forth in the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you live in the firm foundation of, of, that he has set before you. That you can help others find their place in his hands. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you later.